Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Thought I would do something different. <laughs> I wanted to talk a little bit about <clears throat> what's going on with uh, setting up a uh, priest rotation. Um, I put a message on the uh, on our Facebook page. Um, but I want to be sure folks have a good understanding of where we're at and where we're trying to go with it. The goal, if we can, is to have three priests in a rotation and me on the fourth Sunday of the month. We actually only need one more priest in the rotation because we have Gail and we have Paige. And uh, Gail has, um, she, she said she'd help, you know, if we, uh, if we need her. And then that way we can have the Eucharist really pretty much any time we want as long as we can afford it. Um, one, of, one, of, one of the questions that I think always comes up is what's going to cost the church? And um, I got to get a better understanding of it from, from John. We need to uh, talk a little bit about it. Uh, there's a given rate that is established by the diocese that is paid to a priest under different circumstances. If they do both the uh, liturgy and the Eucharist, they get a flat fee for doing that. And um, the other thing to consider is the $10,000 um, donation we got. And we got that for taking care of staff issues. So that's there too. It's, I think it feels to people kind of jumbled, but it, it, it's really not. You know, we're either going to have a Sunday with the priest and have Eucharist, or we're not. We either will or we won't. And, and that's really what I'm doing right now is uh, doing my best to establish that. And one of the things that came up that I thought was a good suggestion and came through uh, actually our uh, Facebook group is uh, the idea of having a guest in, you know, maybe not once a month, but every now and then, who uh, maybe represents another theological perspective. And the one that comes to mind first is Chris Battle. Chris is a good, well, he's a fine preacher. Yeah. And uh, I like hearing him. So there's that aspect of it. There's the aspect of it of, you know, where is, it, where is the supply clergy and all this? Well, there's supply clergy because they don't want to be on a schedule anymore. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the truth of it. They retire, and uh, many of them end up back at a church. Well, I think one reason is it's what they do well, and they want to keep doing it. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best to be patient with the process because I don't want to push it too fast, and. Uh, you know, other folks in the diocese are, are hearing now that there's um, something different going to be going on here at St. Luke's. And uh, I've been playing uh, tag with John Mark Wiggers and RJ. I, but I see their role as guest preachers who could do the Eucharist. Um, because, you know, they can't be doing St. Luke's every month. They got another church. 
that they got to look at here. And so those are the kinds of realities that we're coming up against. The other thing is that some, some clergy that have been around for a long time are no longer able to supply. Um, it's going to happen to me at some point, you know, in terms of what I'm doing with the church. Uh, anybody have any question about any of that? You know, yeah. Well, this isn't a question, but um, there are, there is a supply clergy list, of course, right. uh, on the diocesan list. And uh, two comments. There's a, there is a, the possibility of having a clergy come and do the Eucharist without preaching. Yeah. So, for example, if we had, if we invited Chris Babb to preach, we could still have the Eucharist. Right. You, you, you are in, in obligated for less if a person just comes and does Eucharist. Right. Or I imagine if you had um, RJ, for example, come and do Eucharist um, without preaching. Yeah. Uh, but the people, most of the people on, on the supply list are still available. Uh, I spoke recently, I believe, with uh, Kay Reynolds, who is very, very familiar. She's been at this congregation, and uh, I thought maybe she wasn't able to do it anymore because of uh, her feet. Uh, those of us who were here when she was here before remember that she would pull out a chair and sit to do her homily, and she still does that, and she is still available. And so there are clergy who are still available and may not want to be on the once a month list, uh -huh. yeah. but could still yeah. be available. I, I feel that uh, Emory and I were talking about it on the way to church, and um, I feel as if there are a lot of us who would really like as much as possible, and I know this wasn't the plan we set up, but would really like as much as possible to have Eucharist every Sunday, if possible, if the church can afford that. That's, maybe that's a monkey branch. I don't think we can If there are priests... Well, it's in, not a monkey branch until we find out it's a monkey branch. Okay, you know, thank, we, you. thank we, you. I don't want to be a monkey branch. Yeah. <laughs> We need to talk about it, oh, you know, you. myself and the best yeah. to see where we're at with that. Um, the only increase I saw with the new plan as we deal with it is uh, $25 more um, for a priest who is, well, in, in the event that we have a, a uh, preacher and a priest doing Eucharist, that's $25 more expensive than it would be if we were going with just, just a straight supply. You know? And John, jump in here and correct me if you need to. $25 more for the preaching? Yeah, what happens is that Either a priest gets 125 bucks for doing both, uh -huh. or a priest doing one thing and and and, and a priest doing another. Mm -hmm. That's 75 dollars for them okay. each. Okay. Yes. And how does that work with the guest preachers from other denominations? What what we would still need. An Episcopal priest for the Eucharist, correct? I'm sorry, I, I didn't... We would still need an Episcopal priest for the Eucharist right. with, the guests, with the guests from other denominations. Yeah. And still get $75. The, the, the guests would... Yeah. Uh, well, generally, not right, not guest, right. We generally, generally, when you have a guest, you pay a guest a, uh, an honorary. Yeah, um, honorary. Yeah. So that $125 is going out of the world. Right 
from that standpoint. Yeah, I think you're right. From that standpoint. So that's why it would just be, like you said, occasionally someone from the other denomination. Well, that's generally what we do for a San Jose day. Yeah. You know, I think we still, we still, Vestry and I need to talk about finances and what we have to work with. You know, what's the potential for additional income into the church to cover some of these expenses? You know, I think that there's people out there, if we were moving, if we move this forward, it's going to create a lot of visibility for St. Luke's if we do it the right way. It's important. It really is. Because people don't necessarily know we're here. That's sad. It's reality. Or just because of the location, you and I know that there are historic issues around that having to do with racism that have made things difficult. That's the reality. But, you know, what I'm seeing with the rotation is it's evolving. Actually, I like the way it's going. I like getting the input. So we're going to, I'm going to continue with that. And I'll continue to make sure folks are posted on what's going on with it. Because it's not going to sit still, guaranteed. And I've made contact with other supply clergy to see if they're interested either in a rotation or every now and then, you know. I would like to know that myself. Because the list doesn't really tell you anything. Not even email. A lot of them. There's no email. And that's, I know that's historic. Because pretty much everybody communicates on email and I'm not here to, whether it's good or bad, it's just the way it is. And I'll keep communicating on Facebook. The group is a good place to do that and get the word out to everybody. Now the other thing I wanted folks to consider is what you want to do with Wednesday nights. I was thinking about it on the way over here. There's no reason why we couldn't, on a Wednesday night, talk about the theology of the church. What is the theology of us Episcopalian folks? There are a lot of things that we could talk about there. But what I'm saying is, you know, if you have an idea of what you would like to do, and you want to come on a Wednesday night to do something, then let me know. And the best way to do that is to either send me an email or message me on Facebook. And so the Wednesday night is, the Wednesday night is, would be like the Zoom call that we've done before. Yeah, it would be Zoom and we would be doing prayer with it. I think the prayer is really important. I do. You know, it's just been reinforced to me over the past couple of years how important it is for us to pray together. Good things. Message me and we'll talk about it. That's it. Let's go.
stumble here doing a little bit against me. I can add live pretty good, but this requires reading. Yeah. Lord be with you. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, over the wine, and the oil. 
and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say Psalm 84 uh, re uh, responsibly at the asterisk. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you. Whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs. For the earth and rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height. And the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O Lord. And look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room. And to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold. From those who walk in integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. A reading from Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as children, as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the Lord of our Lord, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that in the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? 
For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea. For so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. Far from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and mirror. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord Christ. Please be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be accepted. A star. And three wise men. You know, there are some sometimes when I, I wish that I could travel into the past to be there for any of these significant mm -hmm. events. I mean, when we're talking about the star. Was it a big star? Was it a little star? See, I've been looking into stars. And I actually got some interesting information. The star of Bethlehem wasn't a comet or a supernova. I don't know why that's good to know, but maybe it is. Or the star could have been a conjunction. See, even in the world of science, people will keep beating something to death long enough that they'll come up with the conclusion that they like. And I'm not disagreeing with it. You know, the evidence is there. It has to do with the alignment of more than uh, one celestial body. The wise men. You know, they just kind of took off and started, you know, probably walking a large part of the way. Maybe riding camels like we see in all the Christmas cards in the world. You ever wonder how many different kinds of Christmas cards there are out there? <laughs> I get at least one from every one of those batches every year. Mm -hmm. And I love it. I love it. I'm not very good at it myself. But I love it. There's so much more to things than uh, what meets the eye. Mm -hmm. But at some point, we've got to proceed on faith. Mm -hmm. Everybody should have a star they follow. Mm -hmm. Everybody ought to have that thing in their mind or in their heart. 
that says to them in the world, this is who I am. This is what I'm trying to do. When my kids were, were growing up, I think I did a pretty good job of teaching them values. And now they live in that world of values. Values that allow mistakes to be made. Values that are based in unconditional love. How do you deal with a child who is addicted to opiates? When do you say you can't handle it? And, and, and what something like that does is lead a person onto the path and the direction at that point where they can see the star. In Indian country, when we do Sundance, I know I talk about it too much, probably, but there are similarities. A lot of cultures are in the stars. You know, they are. They, and in South Dakota, on the Rosebud Reservation, when we get up in the morning to start dancing, we look for the morning star. Because if we didn't see it, it would not be a good day to be dancing. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed. Just think about it, you know. That significance draws attention to the fact that we are so sublimely favored by God. He said, Jesus, it's a little baby to us to all of us. And all those lessons that we learned from them, one thing we ought to be exposing all the kids to those kinds of lessons. It used to be easy to do that. It's not as easy anymore. But it also draws me, thinking about these things draws me to what we've all gone through in the last couple of years. And you know, we sucked it up and we got on with it, didn't we? Every one of us. And what that tells me is that you're following a star. Somebody ought to write a song about that. Pat Boone. I like Pat Boone. Somebody call Pat Boone. Anyway, most of us have lost family members or had family members that got really seriously ill. Or we lost friends. And we fear that it's not over, but I believe things are going to get better. I do. I think things are going to get better. People are, are proceeding with their lives with a sense of positive change. It's a really good thing. And uh, we're starting a new year with a new job for us here you know, to put together something that's going to help churches like ours and other churches out there in the world that need to change the way they're doing things. That's, that's the reality. That's the overall reality of what we're talking about. Sometimes things have to change. And it's always painful. You're good people. I love coming to church here. Yeah. And God bless you. Amen. Please join me. Please stand and join me in saying the Nicene Creed down on page 358.
Okay. Yeah, the book of Colin Terry. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, but one being the Father, to whom all things remain. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in order to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. When the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified, she has spoken through prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer, four four. your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. <clears throat> Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
<laughs> Is there somebody back there who can grab the alms oh, okay. so people can see it? I think everybody knows what it is and what it is. Mm -hmm. For all that everybody can give monetarily to this church. <laughs> Thank you. Heavenly Father, help us with how we give. We ask for wisdom, we ask for peace. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We have some uh, more prayers here. We'd like to start in here like this. It makes it easier. Please be seated. The general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Lord, 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 we are under the service, give you humble thanks. For all our goodness, the love and the kindness, to us and to all of We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your redemption of love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray. Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom be you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power. And the Lord, forever and ever. Amen. The prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty oh God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your love, beloved Son, that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as you give us for us. Grant in us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Before we do the dismissal, I want to let you know that the point is can be picked up if you want one next Sunday, right? Today. Or today, okay. I got a pretty close for it. <laughs> uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.